todavía Let us pray Mighty Father the precious God of heaven the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the mighty God of Israel Father the God of our Lord Jesus Father how we thank you today and bless your holy name that you have given us Jesus the wonderful Lamb of God whose precious blood is still flowing until today washing sin purifying the hearts of men and women redeeming the nations and strengthening the cause for the kingdom of God Father today I thank you for opening this place the precious University of Nairobi that all other universities and colleges may be assembled here in the name of Jesus but precious Lord even as I speak to them today the students the members of the academic staff, the other subordinate staff, the vice chancellors, the deans of students, the professors, and all people assembled here, mighty Father, the God of our Lord Jesus, please release your Holy Spirit to open their spiritual ears today that they may be able to hear you and hearken to your word in this very critical dispensation in this nation in the mighty name of Jesus Amen and amen and amen let us love to the lord precious people hallelujah what a big blessing to be here today and i see a lot of students still coming in as we shall have the ashes allow them to have the first priority to sit in the front of at least the seats that are most available in the front and even the students who are standing far away I am very blessed to be at the University of Nairobi today and I want to first of all thank the Vice Chancellor who has permitted and approved this meeting I saw the letter that authorized the meeting that came from the office of the Vice Chancellor Professor Magoha and I want to thank the Dean of Students, whom I'm told is on his way to this meeting. I want
want also to thank the deans and principals of the various colleges, Kabete campus and all the other campuses, Parklands, Chiromo. I want to take this opportunity also to thank the vice chancellors of the other universities, Daystar, the Catholic University, Nazarene University, Kenyatta University, Jomo Kenyatta, and all the universities that have sent their students here today, including the Kenya Medical Training College and the precious deputy principal who has just spoken here, and the student union of the University of Nairobi. I want also to thank the Christian Union in this university because surely without your gallant efforts this would have not been realized. But even as I begin this very precious public lecture that you have invited me to give in your precious institution I want to recognize each and every student that has made an effort to be here and also make you understand that this for sure today will mark the turning point in the life of the students in the University of Nairobi because of the things I will say here that even as you hearken to everything that will be said here Revival will be able to visit the University Hallelujah that finally the institutions that symbolize the beacon of hope for the nation will be able to align with the will of God for this land and that Jesus will have his way in the universities and hence in this precious nation that bears the name Kenya. I want to thank Dr. Gyoro, thank you so much for asking me to talk a little bit about my academic career before I speak about the fear of the Lord. The last time we spoke, when I gave a public lecture of this nature, They were in three institutions, beginning with Hohenheim University in Stuttgart, Germany, at which Dr. Onyoro was available, was present, and then a public lecture was also given at Egerton University, and I know they are tuned in by radio, since we are live on radio today. And then also at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. And I want to say that it would not be complete until it has been spoken at the University of Nairobi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like we recognize the important role this institution has played in this nation. Gracious students, members of the academic staff, and the bishops, pastors who have attended this, the lecturers, professors in Egerton listening by radio, in Moi University tuned in by radio, Masendo Mulira University, Baraton, all those 
those tuned in by radio in the western part of this land. It is surely a privilege and very humbling to come to such a learned institution and be given the opportunity of enlightening the community of even the importance of God in the lives of both the students and the academics. We are very much aware of where our country stands today. That our country is standing on the brinks of a restoration and healing and she has to choose the way to enter into the land of healing and restoration but she needs to tip the threshold, the balance that healing may animate in the hearts of the people that communities may become cohesive again that hope may return into the hearts of the students even as they aspire to join the labor force that builds this nation but I'm humbled today to share a little bit of my background as we come to today's message of the fear of the Lord. I studied in this very institution. I was a cadet, transferred to cadet from my career when there were problems here and there in Uganda at that time. Then I remember the Office of Academic Affairs here working with me very closely until they facilitated my transfer into this institution from Makerere to Kamete at which I did my Bachelor of Science and as I walk through this journey, precious students, I want you to realize that this is your day today. That you may be able to see a mirror image of your life. That even as I walk through this very short summary of the journey that the Lord passed me through, you may be able to review yourself and try to identify if God is speaking with you if the Lord may be calling you in one way or the other but I studied in, in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 at, 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 at Kabete, Upper Kabete finished the Bachelor of Science And then did the coursework here for the master's degree program. And then was very blessed of the Lord at that time to be actually the leading student in that program. And so I opted to study genetics. And later majored in plant genetics but because of the nature of the study that I was undertaking I was drawn to study either in Israel or in Germany then finally I ended up in Israel because I became interested in biochemical genetics understanding the genetic basis of biochemical pathways and for those of you tuned in by radio 
the millions listening on the western part of this country, I will beg you to bear with me that I may get down to the bottom of this issue with the students to speak these terminologies here that today we may understand the relevance of Jesus in our academic institutions. But when I studied in Israel at the Ben Gurion University of the Negev, I looked at enzyme systems and I wanted to understand the different isoenzymes and how they are inherited and their relevance in fighting disease. This was mainly driven by the understanding that out of there shall come the most important intervention in medicine because we know that the future medicine is going to be the small molecules the delivery of small DNA molecules small proteins even across the blood brain barrier even in transporting them to the different targets in the body and then I was able to continue for my doctorate at the University of Haifa in Israel too At that time, I became more interested in DNA sequencing in the area of molecular genetics. And in looking at DNA sequencing, then at that time, the Human Genome Project had just been instituted. And there was a lot of interest in understanding how many genes are constituted in the human body because we quickly understood that the future of medicine, the future of drug therapy, is going to come from understanding how genes behave in the human body, how genes are important in transducing signals in what we call signal transduction, to reduce the side effects of medication and I remember then we looked at different sequences of DNA we call them junk DNA that which we did not understand at that time and using the new technology of PCR was able to elucidate the regulation of expression of different genes. But after that, I then became more interested in looking at cancer chemotherapy and how the different anti-cancer drugs induce different biochemical pathways, what we call switch on and switch off basis and how we could use that to address, to address the treatment of different carcinomas and I looked at cervical carcinoma breast cancers used also different models of lung cancer HT29 and many other kinds of carcinomas. The importance then in my postdoctoral work, working then at the University of Illinois at Chicago Medical Center, at the Center for Pharmaceutical Biotechnology, was to be able to design new drugs for cancer 
by understanding the signal transduction pathways that different anti-cancer drugs induced in the human body. For example, in looking at tamoxifen, we were able to quickly understand that it is only the 4-hydroxytamoxifen which was the active drug and so there was need to clean up that even as the women were given this kind of medication the tremendous side effects of losing hair knocking off of their livers the cytotoxicity of these medications would have to be minimized and then I also transferred to the State University of New Jersey where I majored now in teaching the graduate program on oncoprotein networks looking specifically at the mitogen activated protein kinases these are special proteins in the body and we were able to identify them as potential future drug targets and we knew that if we would clone them out and understand the basis of their regulation then we could control what we call upstream and downstream events and bring hope to patients and so at that time it was also important to look at phosphorylation as a main mechanism that is used by different anti-cancer drugs to induce the signaling pathways that they were intended to bring into the bodies of the patients. This involved working with the Food and Drug Administration of the United States this also involved being appointed into the American Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists. This also involved working with the different organizations that funded research like NCI, the National Cancer Institute of the United States, and the NIH, the National Institute of Health. And the Lord helped me then, I became one of their reviewers for their research grants. And many other journals. And then, the Lord also pushed me from the Department of Pharmaceutics at the State University of New Jersey, to the Environmental and Occupational Health Sciences Institute, Yoshi, which was a joint institute of University of Medicine and Dentistry and Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. At that time, it was most interesting to look at why different populations were prone to specific different kinds of cancers. For example, the Chinese had a different type of cancer prevalent in their populations vis-a-vis -vis the Americans or the European and then the Lord allowed me to get into the area of cancer chemo prevention looking at the feeding behavior of populations of people and how that can prevent or predispose them to certain cancers it also became important to look at the environmental insults like exposure to secondary smoke when somebody is smoking at the entrance to a building as you enter benzene from the cars and then finally I was appointed to the and the National Institute for Cancer Research in New Jersey at the time which is called CIMJ the Cancer Institute of New Jersey which is 
cultural offshoot between the Robert Wood Johnson Medical School and the University of Medicine and Dentistry. But at that time, the Lord allowed me to teach the different types of surgeons. We had the breast, the melanoma surgeons, the breast surgeons, and all the others. There was need for them to understand their critical involvement in research, oncological research. And then I became more interested at that time in developing molecular signatures for different tumors with those different surgeons because this was in the Department of Surgery. It was very important to identify the tumors because of the concept of MDR, the multi-drug resistant cancers. And I remember that time I narrowed it into a very small area of tumor angiogenesis. Understanding how different cancers grow in the body. And even we were able to identify the VEGF1, VEGF2, which is the vascular endothelial growth factors. Don't worry about the terminology. These are the different genes that are potential drug targets that we were targeting in our drug design for the new drugs so if we could shut them down then the tumors would stop growing in the human body VEGF A and B and understanding metastasis and the last stop I want to share today here is when I was also finally appointed to the Civil Aerospace Medical Institute at which place I became more interested in looking at aerospace safety in aviation medicine. The technology in cancer research was the highest so it was important to use it to address issues in aerospace safety. Why is it that astronauts suffer from loss of bone density why is it that pilots suffer from fatigue when they cross the Atlantic? And how is that related to the safety of the aircraft? So I now did in looking at the effects of the cockpit and the human performance of the pilots in the cockpit in civil aviation. Then I was more interested in pilots that are showing signs of cardiovascular diseases and now we can identify this earlier using molecular signature, the C micro cDNA, the proteomics today, which is an interface between biochemistry and computer programming. That once we get those signatures of fatigue, we'll be able to intervene in advance before any aircraft accidents. It was also important to use that technology in forensic toxicology after the crashes. that are mobilized and immobilized based on alcohol use so we could make aerospace and aviation travel safer and then now we need also in looking at drug use, drug abuse by pilots and even looking at just general medication like when one is having a cold and takes the flonase, all these medications they take and then, how about the doors? Because when we are walking down here at gravity, your blood flow pattern is different from when you are 40,000 feet up, when the blood flow is different. And when prescriptions are done for medication, it is done here. So we all need to adjust prescription for those in aerospace or in the cockpit 40,000 feet above sea level 
These became the most important areas of my life and work. And then I remember that time, I even received an award from the College of American Pathologists, CAP of Northfield, Illinois. This was a group of professors that would walk into your laboratory and they were charged with the responsibility of looking at your SOP, your standard operating procedures. Because I was involved in forensic urine drug tests and all these things. But precious people, it was during that journey, it was during that walk, it was during that career track that the Lord Jesus began to speak with me, began to approach me, and it was a long journey of trying to run away from the Lord. The first time that the Lord encountered me in a dream and tried to call me was in Israel when he spoke to me by voice in a vision when the cloud of the Lord appeared and the voice called me three times and he said, I have called you. But unfortunately for me, I was not in the place of advantage where you are sitting today. Nobody had ever told me of the fact that the Lord can call. So I began to run away from the Lord. And that's why this is very critical today to the students listening from Egerton, from Moy University, Masinda Melillo, Baraton, and all those assembled here from University of Nairobi, Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta, Daystar, Baraton USIU, Catholic Nazarene. Nobody had ever instructed me on how to behave when the Lord he calls you then I did not even understand the supremacy of God over human life and so I began to run away and the Lord spoke with me in a dream again at Chicago and still tried to run away and at New Jersey tried to run away until finally he caught up with me at KEMI, the Civil Aerospace Medical Institute. Listen, precious people. What did the Lord tell me when he encountered me in those dreams? The first thing I saw was that in those dreams, I was preaching in many countries. A large number of people were gathered. And people with cancers were healing. He was also healing the cripples, the lame, the blind, the deaf. And yet on this other side, I was so preoccupied with trying to find a cure for cancer, trying to find new medication for this and that, with the different pharmaceutical companies that collaborated with us. And yet, in the dreams, I never told those people that the Lord kept talking to me by voice and showing me big meetings in which I was preaching and people were being healed including from cancer and HIV AIDS this 
instability. Hallelujah. Until finally one day, a group of pastors whom I approached, they told me they did not know what to do with those visions. But that if the Lord has called me, I had to obey. The alternative would have to be to be pushed into the stomach of fish. And I repeat, to be pushed into the stinky stomach of the fish, but still at the end be able to go. And so precious people, I want to encourage you today that when the Lord calls you, please hearken your ears unto the Lord. I want to now share with you some very critical messages of the Lord. Messages that will transform your lives as students. The reason for which I said I wanted you to sit in the forefront. One of the main messages is that of November 1. The year 2006. In the vision of the Lord that took place at 3 a.m. in the morning. The mighty message that has brought forth a big revival across the globe. In fact, we just returned from Paris, France last week. Where there's a big revival also lit up by this message I'm going to share here. And in that mighty vision of the Lord, the Lord, He opened heaven in the night. And He presented two wedding rings, very golden and very glorious. And he was flipping and tilting them in that dream. And then after that, the voice of the Lord said, From today on, all authority in heaven and on the earth has been given to Christ Jesus. Now, ever since I began to proclaim this message, and give revelation on this word. The Lord has spoken with me about many other things too, even those relating to Kenya as a nation. You remember when I came in to this country in 2004 and I told Kenya I see a lot of blood coming to flow over your land and many people quickly wrote me off and published it in the public domain and I say I see blood and parts of human bodies heads cut off hands cut off, legs cut off strewn all over this land parts of human bodies fichua, miku, mikono zimekato na mapanga and we published, I remember specifically, in the edition of one of the papers, April edition of the year 2005. And I also spoke of the earthquakes that were coming to Kenya. Many people even laughed. And I spoke of the horrendous and ravaging famine that would visit if this nation does not repent and today i have brought packages of messages here for the vice chancellor the deans of students the heads of the sonu the student organization the heads of the christian union that they may look back and see what was spoken to this land and why kenya is sitting where she is sitting today why did the Lord speak to me like that about you precious people in this land? Listen very carefully, precious people.
there is what we call the prophetic timeline in the Bible. And much as many times we have lived as casual and usual and daily Christians, living our daily lives as a nation, we definitely knew that a time would come when God will have stricken a given position in the prophetic timeline, a time at which God will now have to demand that we purify our lives and begin to live in the fear of the Lord. And in that conversation, of the 1st of November, the year 2006, when he presented the wedding rings in the sky, this is the revelation the Lord is advancing to the church. Number one, that there is nothing God Almighty speaks about that you will not find in the Bible his word. And that is why a lot of deception and falsehood and false prophets entered Nairobi, entered Kenya, because nobody bothered to use the Bible as the yardstick, as the benchmark to vet what the false prophets have said. Number two, in the book of Revelation chapter 19, he talks about the wedding of the Lamb of God. I am so blessed that I have come to speak this to the academic community today. Because many times, in our pursuit of excellence in academia, we so seem to have almost outgrown God. We even forget that it is He that has kept us, helped us to be students, helped us in the exams, the cuts, the final exams, and so, in Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 to verse 9, the Lord celebrates the wedding of the Lamb of God. And that is what is popularly known as the day of rapture. The meaning